Hey guys, thanks for joining me for this 34th episode in Season 2 of Good Questions with Cameron Dole. Special guests in this episode include actor and uh, author George Chakiris, his book My West Side Story. We'll also visit with Texas country artist Marcy Grace. She's got a new single entitled Empty Hearted. We'll also visit with the Goldbergs' Erica, Haley Orentia. We'll talk about the continuation of this season of the Goldbergs. And our final guest will be new country artist, Du Pendleton. His debut single might as well be me. He'll play that for us. Might even see if we can get him to play another. Of course, if you would, please take the time to subscribe, drop a like, comment, leave some feedback, and of course, share with your friends. Well, most of us don't have money to waste right now, am I right? But if you're in the market for any of this stuff, now might be a good time to buy. Now here are six things that always go on sale in March. Number one, TVs. Manufacturers are getting ready to release new models, so it's the second best month of the year to buy a TV, November being the first. Number two, jewelry. Now there's always a lot left over from Valentine's Day, so jewelry stores drop their prices. Number three, winter sports gear. You know, things like skis, snowboards, and heavy coats get discounted as we get closer to spring. Number four, frozen food. March is National Frozen Foods Month when a lot of grocery stores offer deals. And something called National Frozen and Refrigerated Foods Association also partners with coupons.com to offer more discounts. Number five, mattresses. Again, new models are on the way, so stores are trying to get rid of last year's stuff. And number six, grills. It's the last chance to get a deal before prices go up ahead of summer. They usually don't drop back down again until July or August. Well, our first guest on the episode is legendary actor. You remember him from West Side Story, George Chikiris. We're going to talk about the book, My West Side Story. And uh, first off, George, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show this morning. Hey, Cut, thank you for taking the time to have me on the show. I, lucky me. I appreciate it. <laughs> now, now, George, how how long was my West Side Story uh, in in the thought phases before you ever uh, put words down on paper? I mean, when did this come to you first? Well, it, it, it didn't come to me. And, uh, you know, the, I, 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 I actually have a problem remembering how we even started this book. But uh, I, I, I worked on this book with a wonderful writer called Lindsay Harrison. Lindsay, we've become great friends. And Lindsay has done Tippy Hedgeman's book. She's done, I know Tippy, and, and uh, Lindsay has done some great books. So I, I was working with a wonderful writer. Um, it, and uh, I, I, my recollection is, and my memory allows me memory sometimes, is that the publishers with a writer attached came to me about doing a book. And I think that's how we got off the ground. And once that was in place, I started working with Lindsay, and we were just talking to each other, interviewing. And she was, it was like a long Q&A just to drive, to jog your memory. It was so hard to remember a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Since I'd done the book, I, I thought, thought of things. Of why didn't I put that in the book? And I didn't because I didn't think of it. So, but it, it, it's, uh, it, was a, it was a really kind of a learning experience and reminding me of, of, uh, of so many of, of the Remind you, all the people I've gotten to work with, all the wonderful friends I've, I've come to know over the years, the things I've gotten to work on. I mean, it was just it, it's been a really uh, a nice journey, I'll say. And how can you quantify what West Side Story did, not necessarily for your career, but but, but your personal life as well? How how that uh, that movie musical affected uh, your life? Well, I'll tell you what, it, it affected my life uh, dramatically in, in the most wonderful, positive way, as it did for anybody who was involved in that. It affected Robert Wise, it affected Leonard Bernstein, it affected the Irish Company, everybody who was associated with that film. Because the film has been such a huge uh, global success, uh, it was it was the high point in just about everybody's career. Um, so it, it, was, uh, it made all the difference in the world uh, to me, because it opened the door to move on to and, and be able to do other things and work on other projects with other people and and, and just love because I loved working. Uh, I'd always wanted to be in. I didn't know it, but I, I was always wanted. I, my first thing I, I always wanted. I loved musical movies more than I loved anything else, and that was my first love. And I and I got to do all of that thanks to West Side Story. Um, but it. 
And I, I suppose, you know, when, when your professional life is, 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 is affected in such a great way, of course it affects everything personal as well. It's hard to be specific about it, but it's, it's all of the same ball of wax. Your personal life and your professional life all you know, move, with, move with each other. So it was it certainly opened the door professionally and, and allowed me to do so much more. And personally, it's, it's you know, we, I, I, I've, been, I've remained, we've all remained friends over the years, all, all kids in West Side Story. We still know each other, and we are what I call a, a, a West Side Story family. Rita Moran is one of my greatest friends. She lives in Oakland. I don't get to see her every day, but we're always in touch, but not just with Rita, with everybody. I have some, some uh, live in New Jersey, some are in New York, some are in Florida. And so, but we, we keep in, we keep in touch. And that experience really brought us together uh, in a wonderful, uh, unique way. Even Robert Wise, the director, uh, mm-hmm. said that he, that film, even for him, he was the first time, even for him, that he remained in touch with everybody connected with the film after it was over. And he's done some amazing movies. But West Side Story, even for him, was a unique uh, personal and professional experience. And and you talk about your friendship with Rita, and I, I love the quote that started things off here. It says, you will savor this story of a Greek boy in America who did well, very well indeed. And to hear those words from Rita in response to the book, I mean, how much? what does that mean for you personally? Oh, well, I'll tell you what it means for me. It's just my friendship with Rita. Um, I mean, I, 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 met, I met Rita the first day of rehearsal for, for the movie in, what, 1960? <laughs> um, and, and, and I've known her ever since through all the, the things that, that happened to her in her life, her marriage, her, her daughter. I'm Godfather's her daughter. Um, it's, I, I just had a, a really beautiful uh a friendship with her and, and with, with everybody else, but, but in, in a way more with Rita because I uh, we stayed in, in closer touch, I'll say, uh, and I really appreciated uh, Rita uh, writing this little uh, bit for me on the on the book because coming from her it meant a great deal, and it really did. And again, the, uh, the the book, My West Side Story. George, I want to make sure and, and let folks know where they can find more information about the book, uh, the website, and, and social media as well. Uh, well, listen, I'm so lousy at this kind of information, but, <laughs> but uh, I, know, I, I know that the book, I think the book is for sale at um, Amazon, um, and I, I understand it's uh, for sale in bookstores as well. That I really wouldn't know about it, but uh, um, I know that's how it's available, and um, I'm... I'm really not good. Can you can you tell just by talking to me? <laughs> I'm not good at social. I don't do social media because I'm not good at it. But um, and I also don't want to talk to all those people. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure I'm even answering your question appropriately now. But uh, it, it, I, I I loved the experience of doing the book because it, it would allow me to review and uh, revisit uh, so many people and so many uh, instances and and. Uh, just it was it was good to go back and and and, and remember and write down uh, some of the what, what I what has happened to me in, in, in my life. That's right. Again, uh, the new book, My West Side Story. George Chikiris, it's been great, uh, an honor to visit with you this morning. I hope you have a continued great rest of your week, and uh, hopefully, we'll catch up again, my friend. But thank you very much. And I have to, you know, you guys are so incredible. I don't, you are so, so wonderful at what you do. Uh, and talking to you is just, uh, is, is, you make it really easy and comfortable. Thank you. Well, you know, I- I'm so jaded that as soon as I saw this story, all I could think of was it sounds like this guy wants to hunt us for sport in space. Now there's a guy named Yusaka Meizawa in Japan and he's a multi-billionaire. Not sure if you heard this story, but back in 2018, he bought the rights to SpaceX's first passenger trip to the moon. Now the amount he paid is confidential, but it's estimated to be around $250 million. Well, that flight has been scheduled for 2023, and now Yusaka is looking for eight random people to join him. Quote, 
It will take three days to get to the moon, loop behind it, and three days to get back. I will pay for the entire journey. I hope that together we can make it a fun trip. Now he says he's looking for two main things in people that he chooses. People who want to push the envelope to make a better society and people who are willing to support others. Now if you are interested, you can apply on his website, dearmoon.earth, by the 14th, which is a week from Sunday. Texas country artist, you've heard us play her on the radio here in uh, southwest Oklahoma and uh, all over Texas. Got a brand new single. We're going to talk about that as well as, uh, well, what 2020 led us up to 2021. Marcy Grace with us today. And first off, Marcy, thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Now, now, Marcy, tell us uh, a little bit about where the background, where music first uh, came into your life when you knew that uh, that you had the calling, if you will. <laughs> well, my dad was a musician, so uh, he had a Tejano band back in the 90s, and he did a little bit of country, too, when I was growing up. So it was kind of like um, my time to kind of choose an instrument. It was it was kind of like, <laughs> OK, she's going to do music. So, um, yeah, when I was young, actually, drums is actually my first instrument. I started playing when I was about five. I had like a wooden block duct tape <laughs> to the bass drum pedal because I couldn't reach it. <laughs> um, so I started pretty, pretty young. Now, did uh, how much of an influence did did your father's music and and uh, your drumming as well play on uh, the the sound that you've got? Yeah, no, it, it did it did play a lot of influence. You know, my my dad played uh, played a little bit of country and and um, you know obviously had a Stahano band, and so um, I took some of his influences too. I mean, I, I grew up in the '90s, so like on on the radio on like top you know 40 radio you had like show crow and then you also had like the dixie chicks and then you had like matchbox 20 and santana all on the same station which was so awesome i miss the 90s <laughs> um so i was really like inspired by so many different kinds of genres and whatever my dad listened to too so uh it was a uh, it's definitely played a huge influence on me now what what instrument was the biggest challenge for you oh man Keyboard, keyboards. I had to uh, learn keyboards in, in college <laughs> for, for my degree. And um, yeah, it kicked my butt. <laughs> <laughs> many, uh, many a music student has uh, has said that same thing. I would be, uh, the, it's the guitar for me. I just can't ever sit down long enough to, uh, to learn guitar is my problem. Mm, yeah, yeah, it's got it's got a few things about it. <laughs> now, who uh, who had the biggest vocal influence on uh, on your styles, and and, and maybe it's still uh, obviously it's still evolving today as well. Yeah, well, a big one of mine, uh, Linda Ronstadt was a huge I'm a huge fan of hers and I mean just the most one of the most versatile voices first of all and so strong and um yeah I grew up listening to her a lot uh, and then Alanis Morissette too um a uh, huge influence as well I, I always loved uh the stuff that she can do with her voice and so um took a little bit from 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 those those two influences there and the, the the Texas country genre or subgenre, whatever you want to say, it uh, it allows so many different influences and so many variations on the country sound. And uh, you take a little liberty with that as well. And how how cool is it to know you've got uh, you've got the backing as well of a, of a great great group of fans. <laughs> it's really awesome really awesome um you know I, w for me like when i write songs I, you know no matter what genre it leans towards if it's a good song i'm gonna play it and record it and, and that's what's so cool about this scene is that you can have songs that lean a certain way a little bit more rock a little bit more uh traditional side and it's it's all still texas country music and that's i think that's what's so great about our scene and we have the best fans with that and and also w along those lines, the Texas music scene's probably done a little bit more of concerts and in person stuff. So to be to be able to be out there and and being in front of folks, I mean, how awesome was it the first time after the break that you had to take? Yeah, it was really awesome. Um, man, we took a long break. I mean, me and my band, it, it was just like, even just going two months without playing was like the longest ever, or even a month without playing was like the longest ever for us. So um, yeah, when we finally got back on stage, it was really awesome. Good to see real people who <laughs> hear real uh, clapping and stuff. So um, man, it was a great feeling. And, and we're getting some more dates too for the spring and the summer. So we're excited to get back out there. 
Now, now the new single, Empty Hearted, uh, give us a little insight into the single and, uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, how you feel as it's, uh, continuing the, the, to climb the charts, if you will. Yeah, no, this was actually the first song I wrote in, in 2020 in this, uh, quarantine time that we had. And, um, I just wanted to kind of tell a, tell a story, you know, about a, a girl that's still a little heartbroken and this is still misses that person. And, um, you know, my music's kind of being a little bit more influenced by electric guitar. Now, um, my goal was to play more electric guitar in 2020. And so, um, yeah, I'm playing solos now and everything in our show and stuff. So it's really cool. And so, uh, yeah, a lot of my music, uh, I've been writing on the electric guitar now, so it's, it's got that influence in there. <laughs> and and is, is that the one you were going to play for us today? <laughs> uh, no, actually, uh, I thought I would play uh, the last single, kind of get you moving a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I may need that. I'm out of coffee, so. <laughs> yeah, um, this one's called Like I Do. It was uh, the last thing that we had out last year. And uh, man, this one just is always fun to play with the band live. So um, yeah, it, here we go. Awesome. <laughs> Let me pull my mic here. Here we go. stuff right there that is good stuff <laughs> thank you so much now now marcy <laughs> this last year the, uh, the the songwriting for you did you find uh, the tones of your messages being a little darker or or were you working extra hard to uh to to, to maybe put a little positive spin on things 
Um, you know, mostly positive. You know, it's a I'm a positive person. I'm a happy person. I'm always smiling. So it's kind of hard for me to write dark songs or sad songs or even just like slow songs. Like I have to be in a special mood to write a slow song. Uh, so a lot of my music is, is upbeat and up tempo. But uh, yeah, definitely. I try to try to keep it a little positive. Now, now having you know, the influence of Alanis, I figured there had to be a little bit of darkness in there, right? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's coming. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's what's the hardest part of the of the writing process for you? Is it is it the starting or is it the uh, the, the 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 finality saying okay, we've had we've done enough? Yeah, I, I you know I think it's it's the uh, definitely the ending of it. It's like okay. Is this done? Is this where I want it to be? Um, do I need to add a little bit more here and there? As, as an artist, you know, you feel like you're never, <laughs> you're never done. So finally, you just have to say, okay, no, nope, it's good. It's where it's going to be. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely that's that's one of the harder parts for me. Now, now, who has been there being in your in your corner, especially this last year? I mean, I, I know artists had a, a rough last year. Who's who's been your constant yeah. reminder, uh, your constant support to, uh, to, to to keep battling through no matter what's going on? Honestly, it's 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 my whole family, um, especially my parents. Uh, they they've been super supportive of of my career, and and uh, it, it's it's really awesome to to uh, to be able to share this uh, journey with them. Uh, yeah, they they really keep me going, and and uh, anytime I'm down, they they're able to cheer me up or anything. So um, yeah, definitely they they're a big part of that. Now, what what artists out there right now are are the ones that inspire you? Maybe it's the songwriters, the singers. Who is it that uh, that, that that really gets the the inspirational or the the motivational juices flowing, if you will? Oh man, there's a lot. Um, <laughs> uh, I could just watch a live concert and be go home that night, or uh, if it's on TV, and I'll start writing like that night because it's just so inspiring to hear live music and hear other people's um, uh, songs and how they perform. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, some of those influences like Show Crow, um, uh, Alanis, of course. She's mellowed out a little bit, though, Just a lately little. on her music. <laughs> I'm like, I miss the angry Atlant Alanis. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely uh, people like that. Um, and, you know, especially here in Texas, too, a lot of great artists uh, inspired me. I grew up listening to Pat Green and uh, Cross Canadian Ragweed, and, um, and Wade Bowen is an awesome songwriter. So it, a lot of great people in this scene too now who was who was the artist that you were able to open up for that was the, the the opportunity that you were like okay i'm in the right place i've made the right decision what was when was that light bulb <laughs> moment for you oh man there's been a couple of, of really great ones um i loved absolutely loved opening up for jamie lynn wilson um uh, that was an awesome experience and she's just so super nice and super uh encouraging and supportive and that was an awesome show um bart crow was another great one that we uh that we did um uh, actually i did that at my college when i was oh, wow. attending at the time <laughs> so that was pretty cool to be able to do it in front of my peers and stuff so uh, those have been really fun that's good. Now, Marcy, if folks want to find out more information about uh, about the new single, about the music, the tour dates as those become available as well, and, and all the socials, where's the where's the best place? Yeah, yeah. So MarcyGrace.com, Marcy with a Y, and then all my social media, um, Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok now even is uh, at Marcy Grace Music. <laughs> what's What's the biggest challenge about starting in uh, in the realm of TikTok? Oh man, just trying to think of good content <laughs> you know it's like you got to find something that people maybe laugh at or like will rewatch a few times it's it's a it's a challenge i'm like trying i'm like in my 20s and i feel like i'm trying to keep up with these youngins out there <laughs> oh, you're, you're starting to sound like your parents right I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, Marcy, it has been uh, great to have the chance to spend some time with you today. I appreciate you playing that song, getting uh, getting the juices flowing for us today. Thank you. I sure appreciate it. Well, pineapple on pizza has gotten a lot of attention, so it makes sense that pizza joints would start throwing other random sweet things on pizza to drift off of that momentum. You follow me? 
Well, a restaurant called Fong's Pizza in Des Moines, Iowa is going viral right now for their new pizza that uses Fruit Loops as a topping. It's crust, cheese, and Fruit Loops. That's it. And like you'd expect, people on social media are split over whether that sounds interesting or revolting. Well, our next guest is our good friend. You know her from the Goldbergs. Also got a blooming country music career as well. Haley Orentia. First off, Haley, thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you for having me on. Now, now, Haley, the uh, the the Goldbergs being one of the one of the first getting back at it uh, in, in the midst of the pandemic, and I know that uh, you've highlighted that social media wise as well. But uh, how much how challenging was it this uh, to, to get this season even uh, to get produced? What was that like? I mean, the first few weeks were definitely a transitional period. Um, we were having to put in a lot of protocols that we just were not at all used. To. Um, so it took a little bit to find our footing, but after the first month, especially, we got into a really good rhythm, and now it's just second nature. <laughs> <laughs> and and what was what was the biggest thing that the, that, that the pandemic taught you as a as a young actress, artist, musician? All of that uh, encompassing uh, that had to be ex- extremely challenging on you as well. I mean, yeah, it was. It's been really difficult to not be able to travel and see certain friends or family that I, I normally would. That's probably the hardest part for me i'm very lucky in that i've still been able to work on the show and we've been able to go you know through this whole season since august without any shutdowns um so i feel very lucky in a lot of ways but you know it's the pandemic has taken its toll on everyone on a personal level to some degree um i've tried my best to just try to find the positives of of a forced break in a way that i'm able to sort of um find my creativity again and kind of revitalize what that looks like for for the next season of hopefully what I'll be doing. Now now on on that same line how was the 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 inspiration was it hard to find I know as a, as a songwriter and 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 a writer as well was was the inspiration hard for you this year? You know it really was. I really struggled with um feeling inspired by the same four walls that I was in every single day. Um, and so it, it took a lot to be, and I don't try to force myself to read. I kind of let things come in as they come in. And then if it sparks some sort of creativity, I'll chase it. But it took a while and it was few and far between, but I, I was able to be inspired by certain things. And, and I did move during the middle of the pandemic, which was not, you know, something I was planning on. But, um, because of that, even it inspired a song concept. And so it's, I think for me, I'm kind of ready for everything to be over so I can start to, like, get new eyes on situations. But um, thankfully, I I am putting out music of songs I've written over the last few years that uh, will hopefully be in an EP and hopefully be released by summertime. Now, what what are we uh, looking forward to? How uh, is is Erica maturing and growing as uh, as the season progresses as well? I mean, the last eight seasons, it's been the big arc for Erica. She's been trying to find herself and figure out kind of where she wants to go directionally, whether it's chasing music or trying to focus academically and and what she wants to do with her life. And thankfully in this year, Erica has really kind of come into her own and she's finally living in an apartment by herself. She's going to college and she's declared pre-law as her major. Um, so this show, I, it's been really awesome for my character specifically, but just in general, being able to follow all the different story arcs of the characters, it, they all have been, they've grown so much. And, and also in real life, <laughs> our, we've grown so much over the last eight years. Um, and so I'm really excited for fans to get to check out the the sort of ending of season eight, because it, it will be um, some major stuff for the show that I think we haven't seen yet. Now, how has how has Erica uh, affected Haley on on the personal side? You know, it's interesting that I don't know if she necessarily affected me per se, but as much as I have recognized over the last eight years how our personal lives and kind of what we're going through um, sort of mirrors each other. Um, while the details are obviously very different of what we do on a day to day basis. Um, I would say there's a lot of things that Erica has experienced or gone through that I tend to be going through similar things in my own life. Um, it's very weird how life imitates art in that way. 
So, so what, uh, as the season progresses and as uh, 2021 unfolds, obviously looking forward to some new music. How, how has the goal changing, uh, the goal setting changed for you this year? You know, that was the biggest thing for me. Since I was kind of forced to have that break, I readjusted sort of my focus on, on what I want to do and, and what direction I want to go. And so for me, not only is it about, you know, this next wave of music I want to release, but I've been working with my dad's company and together now our company, um, a family business of flipping houses in Nashville. So that's been a new adventure for us, um, as well as just trying my hand at developing some concepts that I'm, I'm hoping to pitch and, and sell down the line. I just want to continue to be involved within the entertainment industry um, to whatever degree I can because it's something I, I really do love doing. Now, of course, Haley, want to make sure folks know uh, time and uh, all that for the upcoming episodes and uh, and also the social media where they can keep up with uh, with everything you've got going on, music, acting, all, and, and development-wise as well. Yeah, so you can check out um, episodes. New episodes are happening of the Goldbergs every week on ABC Wednesday nights, 8, 7 Central. And if you need to catch up on episodes, they're all on Hulu. And if you want to be able to follow me for music or kind of see what else I'm up to lately, I'm on all social media platforms with just my name, Haley Orantia. All right. Well, Haley, it is always great to visit with you. Looking forward to the uh, upcoming episodes. And hopefully uh, 2021 turns out a little better for all of us than 2020. (laughs) Absolutely. And thank you so much for having me on. I do appreciate it. Well, how old were you when you finally felt like a grown-up? Well, 1,700 adults were asked that question in a new survey, and the number one answer was, I don't feel like a grown-up yet. Now, 13% of people said they still don't feel like a grown-up. The most common answers all were the age of 18, 20, 21, 25, and 30. Now, here are the top 10 things that make us feel grown-up. Number one, owning a home. Number two, getting your first full-time job. Number three, moving out of your parents' house. Number four, worrying about bills and finding ways to save. Number five, graduating from school. Number six, getting married. Number seven, knowing your credit score. Number eight, planning out your meals in advance. Number nine, having kids. Of course, you would have thought that one might have ranked a little higher. And number 10, getting your driver's license. So how old were you when you finally felt grown up? Leave me a message. Love to hear from you. Again, the number one answer is... I don't feel grown up yet, and uh, I feel that way, well, not so much physically, but yeah, emotionally, still not grown up. Our final guest on the podcast today, <laughs> you, you you may not know the name yet, but I, I am going to venture a guess to say that you're going to know it real soon. Do Pendleton, great to have the chance to visit with you. Once I once I heard you, your music, it, it, it was instantaneous. I was like, we got to get this guy on, find out the story, where that voice came from. Do thanks for taking the time. Thanks for having me, man. I'm happy to be here. Glad to talk to you and share, you know, how that song came about. It was right after we got married. We had uh, been kind of fighting for a couple of days because we had a bunch of musicians come down from Nashville and they stayed with us and we didn't have a honeymoon. And so we were just like crazy musicians for like a week and a half after we got married. And so when we finally made up, I was so happy. I wrote that song all the way to work. And uh, a couple of different things, like the second verse is... Uh, Literally from like the third night into uh, that weekend, uh, the last night of the weekend, uh, it was my turn to drink. I had been the sober guy for two nights after I got married and let everybody else drink. And the, the, another guy was supposed to drop. So I just been drinking all night. He hasn't drank. And then the last hour, he just starts pounding shots. And I'm like, you're supposed to be driving. So <laughs> the second verse is like, you know, I want to come home to you. Uh, you know, baby, I tried. So each part of the song was really literally about all the people around us at that time right after we got married. And so I'm glad people are digging it. Thanks for playing it. Now, now where did uh, the inspiration, where did that voice come from? I, there's so many influences I can hear in your voice. I just want to hear from you who the biggest influences are on your, on your vocal style. I'm not sure. Um, we were only allowed to listen to country and gospel music growing up till I was like 12. And then, uh, but mom had an Aaron Neville and a Chicago and a Whitney Houston tape hidden in her side <laughs> drawer back there. And we'd listen to it sometimes. Uh, I grew up in church, but also grew up in the country on porches and, uh, at, 
Uh, I remember my first black guy, I was three years old in a pool hall. My dad was trying to make some money. So I mean, I've been all over the place. Uh, I think Keith Whitley and George Jones. And then, you know, I, I, I really loved Travis Tritt growing up too. And, um, Aaron Neville and, uh, gosh, anybody that's great, uh, <laughs> Elvis, even, um, my, both of my parents were the, the youngest child of both of their siblings. And, um, so both of my grandmothers were in their forties. So I think I got raised a couple of generations back <laughs> even more than where I, you know, the people around me, because my grandparents were so old when they had my parents. And then, you know, I had, I have cousins that are in their sixties, yeah. you know, first cousins that are really old. So I think all that, in, all that kind of back step a generation or two, the way I was raised, a lot of gospel, a lot of country music. Of course, I like rock music. I love a really cool lead guitar and um, put a choir on anything back me up, and I'm happy. You know, <laughs> you know, that's me. The choir makes everything better, doesn't it? I can take a choir on almost every song. I don't mean I'll work, I'll work with it. Now, now the 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 musical sound, not so much vocally wise. Who's who musically inspires you right now? Um, Eric Church. He's um, pretty incredible. Um, I've just been working so much. Uh, <laughs> Tyler Childers kind of came out of nowhere for me a while back. Uh, I, I like him a lot. Um, I don't know. I listen to I listen to people that like that help create Leanne Womack's last album. Adam, what's his name? I can't think of his last name. It's a really kind of peculiar, kind of soft, kind of. Uh, just a dart of a guitar here with some piano, kind of old timey kind of country stuff is what I'm really digging right now. So, you know, off the beaten path, away from the big hits that I have to play 10 times a night, every <laughs> night, five nights a week at all my cover band shows and the piano bars I work at. Anything else. <laughs> tell us, tell I just us want to hear new music. I just want to hear music <laughs> I don't know, you know? Always appreciate the big hits, but Yeah, I know, right? Now now how did how did that lend itself into uh to, to, to trying the, the, the Nashville scene, if you will? Well, I've always I mean I've always been working toward that. Um last year was a big kickback. This was all supposed to happen last year, uh, but COVID happened and the year before that, we had another baby, and the year before that, uh, you know, <laughs> something else we had to do. I don't know. It's just life. Uh, but I think I'm right on time now, and I'm happy to be here now. So I'm not worried about it. I, and, and my song on a Wednesday, I wrote it 14 years ago, but I said, um, You can't rush greatness, and you can't fake this. And so I'm not in a rush. I mean, I'm just here doing it still. I'm not going to do nothing else. So, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty happy where I'm at. I mean, I'm living the dream, really. I'm ready for that next level. And, it, you know, I think it's coming. I'm working hard for it. Now, I really do. Now doing the, the wife works hard. We got a, we got a great life. We're just ready, you know? Now, the, 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 the doing the cover band and doing the old hits, does, has, has that helped maybe meld that voice a little bit into to what, what we've got today on the radio? Probably. And honestly, um, each time I like really fall in love with someone else, you know, I have to make sure I don't sound too much like them. <laughs> so I do consciously think about that. Well, I just don't want to, you know, ever sound like too, too much, too much like someone else, but, um, it's going to happen probably, but I'm pretty happy with where it's at. I, I, one time when I was like 12 or 13, I remember picking out a couple of different people and I said, I'll listen to these three or four people for a while. Cause I wanted to take my voice toward, the notes they were hitting that I wasn't able to hit. And so I listened to these couple different people for a month or two and really tried to exercise to be able to sing where they were at. I did do that. I mean, I did learn from a lot of different people all over the country too. I mean, when I moved to Nashville, I learned from everybody. I sucked at drums and I played on Broadway and drum and I sucked at drums in front of everyone <laughs> on Broadway for a while before I got really decent. I mean, kind of decent. I don't know. <laughs> but so I mean I've been I've been doing it for a while. It's, now now for you, that's all what, I want to do. What uh, what did 2020 give you the chance to to really hone in on my roofing skills? Because when everything <laughs> shut down, I had to go back to being a roofer for four months, 
but I was lucky to have the job and I was happy to get up every morning and have a weird, different life, waking up at 5.30 every morning instead of getting home at 5.30 every morning. Uh, and I hung out with my dad more and we got some chickens and we did take a gear or two down and um, we didn't get on, um, you know, we didn't get on food stamps and we didn't get on, you know, whatever. We didn't ask for anything. We just got other jobs and we worked a little bit harder. So I don't know. It wasn't that bad. It showed that uh, pers- we were blessed. Perseverance will help you through it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Now th- th- we, we talked about the new single and, and I know you got the keys there and I, I don't know if that's the, is that what you were wanting to play for us today? I'd love to give you another one before the single. I'd like to end with the single. Yeah. Let's, let's do that. All right. Let me give you this new song I wrote. See, I got this album coming out on four, nine. We have another single coming out on three nineteen. We had a single come out last week. I've got three music videos coming out. And if, you know, the, all your listeners, the most important place I need a following on, though, is either YouTube or Spotify, really, at Duke Pendleton. But this song is on the album that's coming out this fall. And I've already gotten three other albums written and ready to record. And I can't wait to get all this wow. music out to you. This song's called Beach Town. I ain't gotta go to work tomorrow. I ain't gotta go to bed till the sun comes in. Y'all raise your cups up. I ain't got to worry about nothing right now. There's nothing right now I can do about anything anyhow. Nothing's going to get me down. I ain't got to do nothing I don't want to do. And all I want to do is get to love it on you and that view. Hit it out to the floor of Bama, that old song. You strong last fit with a pretty smile. Hell in the wind, windows down. Head it out, bow down. In a beach town. I wrote the second verse for all the ladies. Spend a hundred dollars at the dollar store. We got everything we need and just a little bit more. Baby, I want a little bit more. Promise no fire, no jealousy tonight. I know you've been waiting for a long, long time for that view. Hit it out to the floor of Bama, that old song. The sunglasses with the prettiest smile. Hell in the wind, window down. Hit it out, down. Let them be stand. See you and that view Hit it out to the floor of Bama That old song Your sunglasses and the prettiest smile Your hair in the wind, windows down Head it out, fly down In a beach town Yeah, that's how we roll That's how it goes down No verse in love I ain't got to go to work tomorrow. I ain't got to go to bed till the sun comes up. Y'all raise your cups up. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Beach town. That's good All stuff. All right, kids. You, you, got, you got a standing ovation, it sounds like. Oh, wow. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, wrote, I wrote that song on the way to the floor of Bama. It's one of my house gigs right now. I play in Destin uh, at a piano bar in Baytown, and then I play on the other spectrum of the beach northwest florida at the tip over there are you drowning <laughs> somebody's gargling really loud right now i've got three kids right another i'm sorry all right uh, but i wrote this song on the way to florabama um within like five minutes of just driving over the bridge so i always wanted to write like a fun song about be on the beach because we live up in the country but we drive down both work on the beach and I work, we work all over the beach from uh apalachicola to Perdido Key, Orange Beach, Mobile, all the way over New Orleans, you know. Now, what's what for you is the is the 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 hardest and the easiest part of the writing process? Um, well, it just it depends because will, will you have Leo? Will you have Levi stop gargling, <laughs> please? <laughs> Thank you, Omi. 
I think the hardest part of writing is my children sometimes because normally <laughs> one, the little one and a half year old will be sitting right here playing this and the other one's sitting here, but I still am riding through it, you know. I, I mean, I would okay, yeah, have him stop, sweetie. But <laughs> they're pretty easy and they all want to play and sing, so I think it's great. But uh, another part of maybe, you know, trying to write a song is uh, getting stuck on trying to make lyrics work. And if you give yourself a chance to just take a rip them out, put something else in, even if you're really in love with them, move them somewhere else. I mean, I kind of thought about that a lot. Uh, a lot of times, what if this is just completely wrong? You know, just snatch that little part out and move it around. Don't be stubborn, I guess. Maybe that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Probably. What What comes to you first? Is it is it the melody? Is it uh, is it lyrics, or is it always different? Um, it's it's always different, but it's mostly lyrics. And I'll hear the music too. So I'll pull up my phone and I'll try to lay down like a line, like a you know, some beat, you know, like really subtle and then like add in a couple of things, but, and then sing over it and then just keep playing with it. And then I'll have all these parts together and I sit down and I put them together. But sometimes I just write a whole song at once and then just edit parts. So sometimes I just try to write the whole song at once. If I can remember that, if I heard Garth Brooks say, if you can't remember, it ain't worth writing or something like that. And uh, I was like, man, if it's really good, I should remember it every time. So when I'm, it really takes a lot of focus, but if, if the kids aren't screaming, I'm not changing a diaper, then I can do it. <laughs> now, do you, do you work mainly at the keys or do you work guitar or uh, where do you, where is your, your comfort zone? Well, keyboard, uh, but I do play acoustic guitar uh, and I've played a bunch of shows acoustically um, and with a band, when I have a band behind me, I'll play acoustic up front and not play the piano the whole time and just, you know, not even play an instrument, but I also play drums a lot in the piano bars and um so drums are my favorite but i'm way better at keyboard and then uh <laughs> guitar you know i can carry a campfire i'll say that <laughs> now what what was the the hardest part in learning the drums what where or maybe where was the the light bulb moment for you that you finally knew that you finally somewhat got it well for me, I was just too tense. Like I was too nervous because like you look in the audience and there's like Brooke Hogan watching you suck <laughs> on the drums. It's funny. <laughs> and uh, I don't know when I finally just let go and stopped trying to, I think I became a better musician when I stopped trying to do anything <laughs> but be me about everything. That's, that's really, that, that's good stuff. Now, yeah. well, I heard a drummer say he's a good friend of mine. He played on my album. He said, I just don't understand what I'll do to play drums. Like, I don't even hear that beat. And he sticks it in there. And he's like a professional drummer. He's played for Jody Messina and he plays for all kinds of famous people and played the Grammys in Canada or whatever, whatever it's called. And um, so uh, that made me realize, well, yeah, I'm just doing me. I, I, I can't do you. you know, I can't, I can't do it exactly right. I mean, you know, so I gave up on that and just tried to do me the best I can. Well, well that's good stuff. Well, uh, I know you still wanted to play the yeah. uh, play the single, and uh, I guess we'll t we'll talk. Yeah, social, I'll play the single. We'll please. do social media after that. Cool, cool. Thanks, bud. It's called "Might as Well Be Me." I wanna die. See no city lights. I wanna get high and never star in the sky. I wanna go home. Everybody I know plays when they go by. So if you wanna smoke, smoke. Hey, roll that one. If you're gonna drink, drink, drink. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. 
sure like i mentioned uh, all the social media website where folks can uh, find upcoming tour dates new music all that stuff uh, so basically across the line um twitter instagram facebook spotify itunes at do pendleton d-e-w-p-e-n-d-l-e-t-o-n do pendleton at do pendleton i'd love for you to follow me on instagram and see the cool pictures i see around and take and share that with you i'd love for you to follow me on spotify uh i got about 550 followers right now and now i'm starting to be in the algorithm so exciting time to be um <laughs> at that many followers but i need more and youtube let's kick that up folks youtube at new Pendleton. And, wherever uh, you want to find me that's no, cool no tiktok, no, TikTok yet? South, so. no tiktok yet pardon no tiktok yet I have TikTok. I have four <laughs> followers. I don't have any videos yet. I don't know what to do first. I, I've got a couple ideas I've been working on. So I just got it like last week because someone made a couple TikTok videos about me and sent it to me. So, so I thought, well, I can do that, I guess, <laughs> if I find the time. Yeah, I know, right? Time. I know, right? Well, well I'll dude, try. It, it has right. been uh, great to visit with you today. Love the music, man. Uh, yeah, anything man. I can do to help Thanks, out, uh, we're here for you. And uh, hopefully we can catch up again real soon, brother. Yeah, that'd be great, man. Thank you. Your, do your dogs were better than my kids. <laughs> for once. Well, thanks again for joining me for this 34th episode of Season 2 of Good Questions with Cameron Dole. If you ever have a comment, a question, or anything else you'd like to know, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all at GQ with Cam. If you'd like to help out in the funding for this podcast, feel free to click the support tab and follow the instructions. And if you have a special guest idea, email me, GQwithCam at gmail.com. Well, if you haven't yet, we'd love to have you subscribe. Check out the website while you're out and about, www.gqwithcam.com. Com. Got merch and lots of other information there as well. Well, we're going to let our good friend Brandon Allen, he came up with the theme for Good Questions with Cameron Dole. We'll let him play us out. Hope you guys have a great rest of your Wednesday. Join me tomorrow. Got another amazing episode of Good Questions with Cameron Dole.